Hello folks, welcome back. George here. Well, it is March 26, 2024. I'm looking out the window of the beautiful Great Smoky Mountains there. It just rained and well, the fog is kind of clearing off the uh, mountainside. Folks, we have a new uh, missing story here of a student. Um, right here, this is um, Caleb Harris. Uh, and uh, he is uh, 21 years old. He was, um, he's been missing for, since March 4th, 2024. And he uh, was a, he's a college student, student down in Texas, uh, Corpus Christi. Um, and the strange thing that happened here is that he ordered some food uh, from Uber, I believe. And he went out to get the food. And he never came back in. Um, he went out, left. He went with his, his phone, but he left everything else uh, back. You know, keys, car, all that. So, a very strange story. So I thought we'd. Uh, uh, I've got Nancy Grace's uh, interview uh, about this, and and it's uh, from. It's very, very interesting so but first let me go here see if i can get this this is one of the uh news reports in search here. for a missing college student out of texas 21 year old caleb harris hasn't been seen since monday near the campus of texas a m corpus christi he's from new Braunfels. police say caleb was last seen at 2 44 a.m monday morning letting his dog out at his off-campus apartment complex the dog made it back to the apartment but the next morning caleb's roommates couldn't find him. Police say he's left behind his car, keys, and wallet, but he had his phone. The phone had a Snapchat ping at 2.44, but was turned off at 2.58 a.m. News Nation's Chris Cuomo speaks with Caleb's father, Randy Harris. He says his son has never, ever done anything like this, and there are signs that he was preparing to go to class the next day. He would never venture out at 3 in the morning uh, to do anything like this, and you know, if they're going duck hunting or fishing, yeah, they're going to get up and go at five in the morning. Caleb, Caleb's missing without anything. No, no shoes, no wallet, wow. no, uh, his, his truck was locked. His keys are in the house. Caleb is about five feet, 11 inches tall and weighs about 180 pounds. He has brown hair and brown eyes. If you see him or have any information, call police immediately. Wow. Barefooted. Hmm. Didn't, that's, that is crazy. Um, I did bring up the um, the Google where he was at. These are the cottages right here. Let me see if I can get this um, to work. There. Okay, here's the cottages. Look at there. There's the ocean. So, not sure which cottage he was in. Go down here, kind of see. These are pretty nice. Uh, there's a the fence. Um, there's the entr entrance. Uh, there's not a lot of whole a whole lot of. So it looks like there's maybe a motel there or something. A field right across. So, hmm. I don't know, folks. That's uh, some mystery there. So. Um, let's go to, uh, the, um, the interview with Nancy. Let's see what she has to say. If I can get this to work right properly. Here we go. 20 minutes. How can just 20 minutes change your whole life? How does a boy step outside barefoot to get his Uber Eats? And he's never seen again. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. First of all, take a listen to Rachel Bonilla. When Caleb Harris's roommates begin their day, they open the front door to find the Uber Eats food Caleb had ordered still at the door. The roommates started looking for Harris, 
At 11 a.m., the roommates file a missing person report with police and notify Texas A&M Corpus Christi campus security as well that Harris is missing. At 3 p.m., parents Randy and Becky Harris are told their son is missing. Randy Harris headed straight for Corpus Christi. And what does Randy Harris, Caleb's dad, have to say about this? Listen. This is not normal. This is not, this, this is a different situation where, you know, Caleb disappeared, vanished. Just so many things that just don't add up, especially at three in the morning, you know. But he was planning a lot of stuff. It wasn't like he, he wasn't going anywhere. I mean, he, he was planning stuff. So that's what is, is odd about the whole case. Mm -hmm. This young A&M student is gone, seemingly vanished into thin air. And we all know something is off. When you order Instacart or Uber or DoorDash, your food doesn't sit on your front porch all night long for your roommates to find it the next morning. There is a critical 20 minutes, critical 20 minutes minutes that this boy scrubbed in sunshine disappeared with me an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now where is Caleb right off the bat I want to go straight out to Caleb's dad but first I want to give you a tip line 361-886-2840 there is a reward repeat 361-886-2840 Four zero, And now to kill his father, Randy Harris, joining us. Mr. Harris, thank you for being with us. I, I can't even yeah. imagine what you are going through, you and your wife. My son went missing inside a giant Babies or Us warehouse store when he was about mm, three. And just those moments until I find found him, I, I I'll never forget it the rest of my life. And you have been living with this since Caleb seemingly disappeared on a foggy night. I want to start at the beginning with you. When did you find out something was wrong? Um, well, we text back and forth quite a bit. And so, you know, the next morning, typical Monday morning, maybe he slept in late, whatever, and getting ready for school around 1030. And so no big deal. And then we got a call from the roommates. Uh, they called my wife. And uh, she immediately called me. I was working south of town. And so uh, I got down here as quick as I can. And that kind of started everything off with uh, meeting with the police again. They were they were there within five minutes of me arriving and, you know, took took the report again for the and uh, immediately raised it to a, a, a missing persons. Guys, you're seeing shots of Caleb. What an outdoorsman. He is out there fishing, camping, there he is at getting stuff from Cabela's. Which yeah, that that's what I was thinking when um, I saw this. Uh, he's, did he just decide to go fishing or something? But he didn't take nothing with him. So, you know, when you go fishing, hunting, whatever, you got your gear with you. So, mm, She loved. How could he just vanish? What do we know? Tell me some more about Caleb. He's a student at A&M. What is he studying? Where does he live? What year is he in school? Uh, two and a half years into school. Uh, he's studying environmental science. Uh, definitely just absolutely loves the outdoors, loves fishing, loves hunting. Uh, really got into duck hunting the last couple of years and, uh, you know, just loves all the clothes, wants to be sponsored. He's going to um, get his kayak guide license. Uh, to be able to help people that buy kayaks that really don't know what, how to outfit them and what to put on them and what to do. And so uh, his, you know, he's going to do that, uh, getting ready to go to uh, work in Colorado this summer. Um, just a lot of stuff. Uh, he had texted me that evening, you know, some fishing lures that he's going to use the next day. He's very methodical about species of fish he's going to go fish for. He doesn't just throw a shrimp on a hook. Uh, very, very um, calculated of what he's going to do. And uh, that's that was that was the night before, and he was ready to go the next day, and uh, then he vanished. To Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky joining us, forensic psychologist, author of Dark Sides. Uh, you can find him on YouTube at Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky. 
Dr. Jeff, thank you for being with us. You know, when someone just seemingly walks away into the fog, we wonder why. That's not what happened here. He didn't just walk away. Uh, think about it, Dr. Jeff. Somebody doesn't order their DoorDash or their Uber Eats and just decide, hey, I'm going to walk out into nowhere. That didn't happen. He was excited about fishing the next morning, about his plans to move to Colorado for a job over the summer. I mean, look at this guy. No sign ever of depression, of any kind of emotional problem, great grades, just living the life, doctor, living the life. Look at him there, out hiking. This guy did not disappear on his own. I would stake everything on it. Right. In cases like this, a lot of times, right, people wonder about suicide, but it's the idea that you rule a lot of these things out. If there aren't mental health issues, if there aren't a history of um, significant impulsive behavior, then you wonder about accidents. Those happen too. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Did something happen? Um, did he because it was close to the water. I don't know how far that is. It didn't look like it was too far away. Um, but the odd thing is he went out to pick up his food. Uh, but it looks. It sounds like he never even touched the food. So I wonder if he may have gotten mugged out there. And somebody took off with him. I've lived in college towns where it seems like the same accidents happen at the same place around these towns. For example, kids falling in the river. So that is a potential option. And then what it what what it would leave after that was the possibility of some type of abduction or kidnapping, unfortunately. Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky, can I can I just stop you right there? He did not go out on his little stoop at his apartment where he shared his off campus apartment with his roommates. He didn't step out there to get his Uber Eats and fall in a river. That did not happen. Okay, right. I want you to rethink that. Now, right. I'm certainly no MD, much less a psychologist, but I know that much. When I go out right, the talking, front door yeah. to pick up Uber Eats, I'm not going to fall in a river. An accident? Right, I'm talking about accident, ruling that out. Yeah, happen, yeah, okay. I can rule out suicide. Rule I can out. rule out falling in a river. It's out, okay? Let's not talk about falling in a river again. You know, hold on. I, I think it's timeline right. Joining me is Mandy Noel, uh, investigative reporter, News 4 CNN. She got, she got riled up about that. Antonio, Mandy, thank you for being with us. What's your understanding of the timeline? That's what I'm going to be focusing on right now because that's how you start a missing person or foul play investigation with your timeline. Did you hear me in the open say I've got a critical 20 minutes? I think that uh, I think that Randy Harris, who's Caleb's dad, knows the 20 minutes I'm talking about. I'm sure you do too. But I want to get all of the facts I can leading me up to those 20 minutes. Hit me. You are exactly right. And that is a critical 20 minutes. And there's so many questions because in police zones words vanished without a trace it's a strange disappearance so 1 a.m and it's before that 20 minutes caleb is on a ring doorbell camera or some surveillance camera with his roommate a friend and their new dog 2 a.m the roommate goes to sleep on the couch caleb like mr harris mentioned preparing his fishing reels the next day it's the last time his roommate saw caleb 2 44 and this is where that critical time starts caleb sends a snapchat walking the new dog 258 his phone turns off or it dies pings at his apartment complex 320 that uber eats that he ordered it's seen on the surveillance camera but the footage the information with the footage is kind of wonky they're saying it could be a one hour kind of time swing as you mentioned the food's found on the door step the next morning but the other thing to point out here he wasn't planning to go anywhere. He walked outside without his keys, without his wallet, and he walked outside without shoes on. So that time you're just so you can see, or I know you can't see it on the screen, but Uber Eats was delivered. It's saying at 3:20 AM. Right. It's critical because it's just this small window where he was communicating with friends and family. 
and then nothing. Let's take a listen to Dave Mack, Crime Online. Harris and his roommate spend the evening outside in the parking lot with their new dog. It's a little after 1 a.m. when he heads back inside. He sends a Snapchat to his sister at 2.44, and at 2.45, Caleb Harris orders food through Uber Eats. When the Uber Eats driver arrives at 3.20 a.m., Caleb Harris is not in front of his apartment to accept the delivery, so the food is left at the doorstep. Okay, back to Randy Harris. This is Caleb's father. He is begging for your help. Join us. Help in the search for his boy. Again, the tip line, 361-886-2840. Uh, Mr. Harris, can I just run through that timeline again with you? So he's outside. They've got a new puppy. Uh, it's 1 a.m. The puppy wants to go outside. They, they're outside with the puppy to TT in the parking lot. At that mo uh, They're out there at 244. He sends his sister a Snapchat, I guess, with the dog. And there's no question, it's 2.44. They're timed. Correct. Snapchats are timed. And, I might add, they time out once you open them. But I've got one more minute, and everybody may scoff, but minutes matter. Minutes matter. Even one minute. At 2.45, he orders food through Uber Eats. Is that correct, Mr. Harris? Um, I really don't have the exact timeline on exactly when he ordered U Uber Eats. Uh, we do know that the Uber Eats uh, was picked up from the convenience store. Uh, two Lunchables, a Red Bull, and apple pie. Typical, typical for Caleb. Um, we believe it was delivered around that 320 mark because, or yeah, 3 320 mark because they it was picked up at the grocery at the store, you know, like 217 or something like that. Okay, what did he get? Two Lunchables? Uh, two Lunchables, uh, uh, Apple Pie, and uh, Red Bull. Okay. And that's normal. He would go to school, uh, be done by noon, 1 o'clock, uh, get to the back to the apartment. Yeah, that's definitely uh, a college college kid's meal right there. Either a friend or a roommate and grab their kayaks, and they'd have that was their lunch for the afternoon. And, you know, they'd be out till before dark. Joining me now, Assistant Chief Todd Green with the Corpus Christi Police. Assistant Chief Green, can I confirm with you the Uber Eats time? And I know one minute may not matter to a lot of people, but if I saw, for instance, just hypothesizing, another car come into the apartment complex at 2.45, that time would matter. 246, that time would matter. Can you confirm with me the 245 Uber Eats order? Uh, yes, that's correct. And it, it arrived. We confirmed that uh, it was delivered at 320 in the morning. We identified the driver, uh, a young lady. We interviewed her uh, and she did not report it, seeing anything suspicious at the time. Um, and uh, there's nothing to make us think that she had anything to do with uh, his disappearance. She did, she did not see okay. Caleb. The highest art. Well, that's interesting. Um, wow. Hold on just a minute. Let me get this back on that. There we go. You just gave me a lot of information. I know it was a short statement, but that's a lot. Number one, the moment you said a female driver, I can tell you right now, the driver's not responsible. Statistically, a female is much less likely to perform any violent act, period. Not happening. Okay, so she's there at 320, and she doesn't even see Caleb, correct? That is correct. She, um, she did uh, report seeing one other vehicle leave in the parking lot. Uh, we believe we have identified the driver of that vehicle and also uh, have eliminated that individual as a um, suspect. Okay, right there. Uh, Assistant Chief Green, h hold on. I, I don't want you to publicize the name because then 
you know, thousands of angry people would be, you know, coming down on that person as if they were the kidnapper. But can you just tell me a little bit, like, why were they leaving the apartment complex at, at 3 o'clock in the morning? Who were, Did they live there? Were they visiting? Were they leaving for an early morning they shift? Were, why why it, were they was, leaving? It was an individual who lives, actually lives in San Antonio and uh, had come down for the weekend to visit his uh, girlfriend at those apartments. And we're not 100% and he had sure. to drive all the way back. The timeline matches, the timeline matches very clearly very closely so we believe that's the vehicle that she saw uh that individual told us the same thing that he had left the apartments about 3 30 in the morning so uh and the, dis the description of the vehicle anything. no he did not he he saw a vehicle coming into the apartment complex which we believe is the uber uber eats uh delivery person gosh this just keeps getting more and more odd okay that story makes perfect sense to me. And if he's leaving his girlfriend's apartment after visiting the weekend, he's got to leave at 3.30 in the morning to get back to San Antonio on time for a job. It's highly unlikely a guy is going to leave his girlfriend asleep in bed, taking off for a job, and suddenly decides, oh, there's a guy I don't know. I think I'll kidnap him. That didn't happen. Okay, he's out. Let's pick back up where we are. Guys, take a listen to this. We know his phone pinged at three, a little after three, um, but we're not sure um, exactly where he was or if the, he would, he had contacted anybody as, with that ping. Phone actually quit working at 2.58. Okay, let me follow up on that. Mm, 2.58, so completely stopped working. And the Uber uh, lady didn't see him but dropped off the food a person leaves a, 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 the complex heading back to san antonio san, san antonio hmm. um, we all are familiar by now with the brian koberger investigation can i tell you what launches a timeline the fact that one of the young ladies inside that home on King Road ordered, I believe it was a DoorDash. So we know she's alive and well. I think she got the DoorDash at that time. It's like looking at your watch. Yeah, that's, I remember that happening and that story, and that's why this kind of came to me too. I'm like, whoo, what's the similarity? All of this is digitized by time, location, all of that. You can count on it. And here we're getting the same thing, just like this ping. Now, I want to circle back to Randy Harris. This is Caleb's dad. And for everybody on the panel, let me remind you, we're not having high tea at Windsor Castle with Charles and Camilla. If you have an idea, spit it out. Now is the time. Mr. Harris, I want to talk about what you just said about the ping. Uh, oh, gosh. So we're getting a ping at 3 a.m., but you're not sure, as you and your wife were saying, where he was at the time of the ping. The phone quit working at 2.58. Did he turn it off? Did it run out of juice? What happened? Uh, we really don't know that for sure. Um, his phone you know, because he's out all the time, the phone does go dead pretty, pretty quickly because he's, he's, you know, just using it all the time. Um, the, the ping was at 303. Uh, it was a, a Snapchat picture, I believe, to one of his friends and it was on the bridge. But again, the timeline doesn't quite add up. Uh, they were able to get, from what I understand, through AT&T, um, an additional ping around 312 uh, down the street. So, Again, the phone was off or turned off, but there was some other activity, and it may, may have been an I, IP ping or a VPN ping. I really don't know. Okay, let's make sense of what we're hearing right now. And remember, Caleb's dad has been sifting through all the facts. He's throwing out some jargon not everybody's used to, but luckily for us, 
Todd Shipley is joining us, uh, digital cybercrime expert, former detective sergeant, and author of, listen to this, Investigating Internet Crimes, an Introduction to Solving Crimes in Cyberspace. And you can find him at darkintel.info. Todd Shipley, we need you now more than ever. I, because I've been investigating Caleb's disappearance, I understood what Randy Harris just said. But a lot of people may not. Explain what he's saying because I'm not quite sure I understand how he is ordering Uber and that's at 245 and then his phone is pinging down the street at 312. Did the phone have to move? Oh, Randy, has the phone been recovered? No, it has not. We, we've done a tremendous amount of searches right off the bat. Uh, and the police uh, were, were there with cadets and with uh, search and rescue and, and lots of search and rescue people from San Antonio. And that was one of the biggest focuses is, you know, obviously finding Caleb, but trying to find that phone. Uh, even yesterday, we were we had the search and rescue team out of San Antonio, uh, literally in. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, in this place, it's like, like you can't move your legs. Um. Boy, this is a, definitely a mystery. I, I don't know, folks. What do you think? Uh, what happened to him? Did he get kidnapped? I mean, you know, things could be... I mean, it is possible. Um, that just seems like... Let's see. There we go. Super drains with cameras go. and ladders looking uh, for, the, for the phone just, just to try again. Can okay, I, can I jump in, Shipley, you're on. Yes. Um, that information that we had uh, originally came in on uh, an emergency request through AT and T because because it was a, a potentially endangered missing person. Um, that data that we're getting it, right now, we're sharing that with uh, two of our federal partners, the U.S. Marshal Service and the FBI as well as uh, our local team, our local, uh, uh, our, our organized crime unit, which has the resources to go through all this uh, digital data. And uh, the, quite, the bottom line is at this point, we don't believe that that is an accurate ping. We uh, are working on the theory that he never left or his phone last was, uh, located right there on the street, right in front of the apartments, uh, right near the uh, bridge over the drainage ditch uh, where he where he sent that uh, Snapchat photo at about 3.03 in the morning. So right now we're working off that. We don't believe. Ooh, I wonder if this is a case like Riley um, and uh, Caleb was really intoxicated and fell into the water. I don't know if there's water here at this is bridge. Um, would that be a possibility? Hmm. I believe that he ever traveled over to Rod Field, which is about a mile away, a little over a mile. So, uh, the, Okay, the, let me the, decipher what you just said. You think the yes. 312 ping down the street is erroneous? That's, that's our... Um, that's our work in theory right now, that uh, that, that data, it was uh, pre preliminary data that came in very quickly. It, it appeared to show him over there in that area, but uh, at this point, uh, we don't have a high level of confidence that that's accurate. We do feel okay, very so strong. Can you tell me about, this? Do you think it's wrong or you just don't know? Uh, at this point, we, we feel like it's uh, it's not accurate. Wrong. Okay, Correct. that's really Nancy, important. Just, Thank you for telling me that before I go down a rabbit hole with a cyber expert. Is that you, uh, yeah. Todd Shipley, jumping in? Yeah. Go. It, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that the phone found when it was looking for um, cell towers, a cell tower to talk to, and so it could have been a mile away. It, the chief is right. They're looking through a whole bunch of other data that we don't have yet, which would have been the things that, you know, we would all start to look at, which is the cell tower data and trying to figure out where things were. But 
you know, trying to geolocate somebody with just one ping is not, um, you know, necessarily possible or accurate. And the chief is correct. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at the larger set of data that they've got from the cell towers, trying to figure out what other cell phones were there. Who else could have been there pinging those towers at the same time? So there's a lot of data that they're trying to walk through and understand because those cell towers collect a tremendous amount of data. I, can okay, I, can one I go thing back? you just said, Todd Shipley, uh, that I, I just want to follow up on, when you said the cell phone was trying to find a tower, quote, to talk to, in other words, the cell phone is trying to find a tower to get a connection, and it could be 30 feet away, it could be a mile away, so it's pinging Correct. all around, pinging, and that's the cell phone trying to get a cell from one of the towers. Um, I hear Correct. somebody jumping in. Go ahead, please do. Uh, it, was, it was me, uh, Mr. Harris. Um, I want to. I want to really explain something too. The police have done a phenomenal job in this case. I mean, these these guys are amazing, and and not questioning anything that they've done at all. Um, you know, we're 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 outside the bubble. We're looking at all different kinds of things, and and you know, those were areas where you know we went with blood bloodhounds we went with the police and you know so we're you know interpolating and just suspecting along with everybody else so and we certainly understand those cell tower it, images could be uh, even a mile from that location it was just kind of a hot spot and so i really want to stress you know how happy we are with what the police and the other authorities are doing because they they really are uh, they're they're just killing it out there. They're 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 doing a good job, and and I want to make sure that that we're backing them. I've tried every other career, and this is by by far. Yeah, that is definitely a mystery right there. Well, but I'm I keep thinking about the. Uh, the you bridge. know what, Mr. Harris? Usually, uh -huh. when a cop makes a headline, it's because he did something wrong, right? Uh, nobody ever says, like, do you call your cable company and go, you know what, I watched the end of a miniseries last night and you did a great job, you know, making my TV. No, you call and go, the cable's out, fix it. So nobody ever comments on how awesome Ellie law enforcement is. And I really appreciate you saying that because it's so rare that we get to hear that. Um, okay, so... Everything we know about part of the timeline is now upended. And that's a good thing because that helps me refine the timeline. I've got a question. The Snapchat that Caleb sent to his sister, I assume, with the new dog, where was he when he sent the Snapchat? Can you see in the background where he was? Um, yes, it appears he was walking through the parking lot of the apartment complex. It's actually a, a short snapchat video and it appears he's in the complex at 244 when he's walking the dog but then at 303 he's actually just outside the apartment complex on the the main street that runs right by the the complex and there's a small bridge that goes over a, a drainage ditch uh, that's that's okay, the last I be clear about the bridge because a lot of people are like, oh, did he fall in some deep water? That's not what that bridge is, is it? Well, it's a drainage ditch. When we have heavy rains, it, it, it certainly could be a, a, a drowning potential. But at the time of the, his disappearance, there was only less than, a, uh, in that area, it was less than a, a foot of water in it. And we searched it thoroughly with our dive team. Uh, Texas Search and Rescue brought in their canines. We swept it again with the canines. It was swept again with uh, the uh, bloodhounds from the Department of uh, uh, Corrections brought their canines in. So it's been thoroughly searched and no sign of, uh, of Caleb or the cell phone. Okay, so I guess the bridge is possibly out of the equation here. Randy Harris. I feel very strongly he did not go to that bridge and fall into the one foot of water. That's not what happened. I agree. So the Snapchat to his sister, and for those of you that don't know about Snapchat, it's not like you're texting a message. It's a picture. It's a snap. And it's supposed to, I guess, um, 
in the moment, in real time, send a picture of what you're doing that expresses what you're doing at that moment. Um, and, and it's the big way of communication right now amongst preteens, teens, and students. So again, where was he, Randy, when he sent the snap to his sister? Uh, from what I understand right there at, at uh, oh, with, with the sister, uh, it looked like it's, he was just in the parking lot with, with taking the dog for a walk. Okay, and that was just before 3 a.m. Okay, guys, take a listen now to more of what we know regarding the timeline. Here's Jackie Howard. The timeline for Caleb Harris is traceable up until 2.58 a.m. Caleb Harris is on security cameras, ring doorbell cameras around his apartment, and is on his phone, which is pinging at his apartment. According to the investigators at 2.58, Harris is at his apartment when his cell phone battery dies or is turned off. The Uber Eats driver arrives at 3.20 a.m. and Caleb Harris is not there to get the food. 2.58 a.m. to 3.20 a.m., a 22-minute window of opportunity. And in the foggy early morning hours of Monday, March 4, 21-year-old Caleb Harris vanished. Todd Shipley joining us, digital cybercrime expert at darkintel.info. Todd, I mean, when I look at my Life360, it tells me my son's phone is at 10% or my daughter's phone is turned off. So we can't tell if his phone died or whether it was cut off? Well, I don't know who else was connected with Caleb and whether the family had something like 360, which is a great app for families. Um, but at this point in time, they know what they know, which is the phone went dead because AT&T has those records and the phone stopped pinging. So it's going to be, they've got a limited amount. We don't have, like we normally have in these cases, a consistent pattern of, of phone um contacting the towers and letting them know where they're at. In this case, it stopped. So we have to work back from that time and try to figure out what was going on the phone before that to see if there's anything that's of, of relevance to the, the case and who we contacted, who the messaging was to. You know, there's a lot of things that the phone will tell us that AT&T may have already given law enforcement, but they're looking for all those things, trying to identify any source of, of what happened. You know, it, it with all the photos, it looks like he was definitely a water person. Um, and I don't know how far he would have been from the uh, the ocean uh, there. It didn't look like that he was too far, but I don't know, could he have went and just decided to go take a early 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, early morning swim, possibly? Hmm. So, uh, Assistant Chief Todd Green with us, Corpus Christi Police. Again, thank you for being with us, Chief. Uh, I, I'm now, the water is getting money for me, and I know mm -hmm. that you and Randy Harris and Mandy Noel can clear it up. Was he near that bridge that night? Yes, we, we certainly believe that based on the Snapchat photo he sent to... Uh, one of his high school friends at 3.03 in the morning. So we have another entry into the timeline. He sends a Snapchat to a friend at 3.03 a.m. and he's at the bridge? Correct. It, it, it's, we're very confident that he was there at the bridge in front of the apartment complex. So when we're talking about the bridge, there it is right there. Okay, mm -hmm. it's kind of really only a bridge to, to fall off on one side. That didn't happen. That's where he is out walking the dog. Where is the dog, Randy Harris? At that point, the dog was back in the apartment. Everyone knows the BBB is the better. Wow. Um, I don't know. That's, that's crazy. You know, I'm wondering, this is just, you know, speculation. You know, it's. The photo of the of the bridge, it keeps looking it, like it's, um, you know, all that area is foggy. Um, and I just wonder if he somehow went in, out into the road and got hit and whoever hit him. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of throwing stuff out. I don't know. This is 
This is a mystery so here. So let me under, he must have gone out to get the food. Okay, so he's. I'm just saying if somebody was to hit him, you know, in the road, and they may have, they didn't want to get, get caught, put him in the car, take off with him. But they would be, I, I feel like they would be, you know, evidence of that. So. Alive and well, sending a Snapchat right there at 3.03 a.m. The Uber Eats driver arrives at 3.20 a.m. So we're now down to a 17-minute period. Randy Harris, it, the bridge that we're seeing, is it adjacent or part of the parking lot? No, it's, it's literally right at the corner of the complex. And I was going to add, um, when the phone went dead at 2.58, it went dead across the board. Uh, Snapchat, um, I, I have fine friends and I also have fine, you know, the fine utilities, you know, so I can look at both of those and see, and both of the timelines were identical at 2.58. Uh, and then everybody else's Snapchat also uh, located him at 2.58, uh, right kind of right there at the corner of the complex or on the bridge right there. Okay. So the phone dies at uh, 2.58. I know you guys can't see it. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. So the phone rings near the apart at apartment at 2.45 a.m. Uh, 2.58, phone dies or turns off. 303 Snapchat to a friend. I guess that's to the from the bridge. 312 phone pings on Williams Williams Drive, which is right up from the complex. 320 Uber Eats delivers the food. Um, they said they investigated the Uber driver that she. Um, Knows nothing about or never saw him. Mm. So that would be the that's okay. Okay, I've got a question for you. If his phone goes dead at two fifty eight, how does he send a snap at three oh three? That that is yeah, that's that's what I was wondering. A, that's for the forensics to figure that out. Uh, we can't. That's a timeline thing that we we. It's an anomaly uh, because Snapchat, from what I understand, is immediate. And you know we've got a, we've got a, a few minutes there, so again, is that a cell phone a cell tower issue? Is it a AT and T issue? Is it a delay with Snapchat? We we really don't know. It, we feel like he may have done that you know before the phone went dead, but we can't confirm. Oh, okay. You mean like suddenly I get a message that somebody sent yesterday? No, I don't think and it'd be just... like that. No, no, I think. Okay, you know, Todd, simply, what, how, what could it be? Because well, the reason it, I'm interested it, it, is because he's on this bridge. He's at this bridge. Is that the last known communication with him at that location, not standing out in front of his apartment? So can you explain why he may have sent it at 2.58 and then it arrived at 3.03? Sure. I mean, there could be a lot of reasons technology-wise that that it could have occurred. Snapchat is a great little tool, but it still uses a centralized server system where it's got to go to one place and be sent back to whoever the um, sender is sending it to. So it, it could have been AT&T. He could have been in a dead spot that it didn't get picked up right away, and it took a minute to send. I mean, it's, technologically, there's a lot of reasons why it could have been a delayed send. Even if the phone had died, you know, minutes before, he could have sent it, and it just didn't show up till till a later point in time okay so that's that's not unusual all right everyone the mystery well, it, it, is that doesn't you know totally explain it but i mean the point is it could have happened or it could have sent it at that time we just don't have enough you know facts and evidence right now to know without having the phone you know we don't know for sure well to assistant chief todd green do we know if the snapchat was sent at that time at 303 did the phone die or get turned off at 258 do you have any idea where the phone was turned whether it was turned off or it just went dead if it went dead why didn't he go in and plug it up i mean what do you think chief well we 
we're still looking at that and we're, we're puzzled by the timeline as well, uh, as Mr. Schneider said, and, and we've, we're considering the options that he mentioned that it, he may have sent the Snapchat before the phone went silent. We try not to say dead. We don't know if the device was turned off purposely or if it just ran out of uh, power. We, I, I don't think we'll be able to determine that until we actually uh, are able to look at the device itself. Um, we are. The uh, mystery is deepening as parents of a missing Texas A&M student, Caleb Harris, reveal he seemingly vanishes after going out to pick up his Uber Eats order. We are following every piece of digital evidence that we can. But what do we know uh, regarding anything his roommate may have said? To Caleb's dad, Randy Harris, what does the roommate say? Um, their, their, their hearts are broken. I mean, truly, um, these are kids that have grown up with Caleb since first grade, fourth grade, uh, that live in the same apartment complex, live across the street and live with him. Uh, one of the roommates is graduating with a nursing degree. will be, uh, moving out and they've already signed a lease with, uh, actually the boy in the video there, uh, the third boy, uh, in the red or maroon shirt. Um, he'll be joining them this, this fall. As, a, as an additional roommate, which again is another another friend from New Braunfels. Uh, the, the, the friend group out of the New Braunfels area is really tight. There's about seven or eight kids down there from the school that they graduated with. And, and one of his roommates he's been with since uh, fourth grade football, you know, just, you know, all these kids are very, very tight because we went to a small Christian school there in uh, New Braunfels. So their graduating class was, you know, 40 kids. So it was a, uh, uh, very close knit, you know, a lot of these kids are like brothers and sisters. The apartment, I understand Chief Todd Green was carefully searched. I assume his vehicle was searched. Was it still parked there, Chief Green? Yes, uh, that was one of the things we did early on in the search, try to determine if he left, uh, willingly left the uh, complex, why would he do that on uh, such a foggy evening on foot and it, it didn't make sense to us we checked the vehicle just to make sure that it was operational that it had fuel it did uh, so that certainly added to the um, to the question of why would he be uh, going anywhere on foot at that time of night in those conditions uh, as we mentioned it was extremely foggy that night which uh, has also complicated the investigation uh, uh, surveillance video that we have recovered is uh, is not the, uh, the quality that we would uh, normally expect. I did I uh, review or I, uh, I I looked at the reviews for this complex just briefly, and it, the, um, most of it was good, but there was some complaints about the uh, the complex. But it appeared that for the most part that it's uh, you know a safe place to be. So. Uh, but the fog certainly uh, made it much more. But that, again, you know, you can be in the nicest neighborhood and get robbed uh, or get mugged or whatever, you know. Um, I'm almost thinking that's what, our, what we're looking at. Somebody took him somehow. Or he ran over to, to the ocean somehow, if he was close enough, and just took a, you know, a, a, swim more so, difficult to yeah. see things and uh and the i assume that all of his social media has been combed we are in the process of doing that yes uh it's time consuming uh we are we've issued over uh our just our um uh, our uh, team here our team has issued 16 uh, search warrants for electronic uh search warrants for data uh the U.S. Marshals, who's working right alongside with side of us, have issued seven search warrants. Uh, the FBI has uh, has helped us out by uh, accessing uh, uh, financial data. So we're looking at it from every possible angle. And one of the things that's probably a little unique in this situation is that when the data comes in, um, we're not analyzing it just by ourselves here within uh, our department. We're immediately sharing it with uh, the marshals, the FBI. Uh, we're 
constantly in, uh, meeting with the Texas Rangers. We're sharing data with them. So when, uh, when the data comes in, everybody is looking at it, analyzing it, and uh, providing us with uh, any kind of leads that they believe we should follow up on. Uh, we have a really Andy good Harris team, question. Cyber team here, a forensic cyber team here, but we're also reaching out and using our uh, federal partners, federal and state partners. Randy Harris, was Caleb, to your knowledge, in a relationship with anyone? No, uh, his focus was, uh, you know, on on a school, hunting, fishing, uh, playing video games with his roommates, pretty much a, a homebody uh, and very consistent. Um, he's had a couple of girlfriends, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary yep. for a college student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to piece it all together. Guys, listen to this. What we do now is continue keeping Caleb in the light. I mean, keeping him, you know, he's out there. We feel like he's out there and, and we're going to get him back. Uh, we just got to find him. When Barbara switched to TurboTax. Yeah, so this is definitely, definitely a mystery here. What do you folks think? Uh, hmm. I'm, I'm curious. What is your theory, Randy? That's a that's a hard one to answer because you know there we because we don't have a true north in this case and we don't know uh, really what what has happened and there's no the, the evidence and everything that they're gathering um, you know I, I I strongly feel like the authorities are are finding true north um, for us uh, we, we really don't know you know with his his keys were there his wallets there his trucks there you know his shoes are there. The only thing missing is his cell phone. He was barefooted and he vanished. Um, so we really don't know whether he came upon something that he didn't shouldn't have seen or he's the kind of kid that would go out and help somebody change a tire. So, you know, we just don't know. Can I, I chime just in? I don't understand. Yes, please do. So one thing that I, I thought about this, if we're working on the, the theory that this was an abduction, a couple of things that I'm sure law enforcement is looking into. The first thing is there are random abductions of people that happens. But a lot of times when an adult is abducted, um, they're abducted by someone who's had contact with them or knows them. I've seen and been involved in cases like that. So I'm sure that law enforcement is combing through uh, this young man's text to see who he was talking to, um, obviously through the social media, um, but are there people that he had contact with that other people didn't know about? I mean, all these theories I think are probably under investigation and, and also giving this kind of a national voice. Are there people who aren't in that local area who had contact with him through social media or texting or emails or things like that, that could maybe help provide um, other information uh, to look at other potential people that could have been involved in him that maybe no one knew about. You know what, you're right, Dr. Jeff. Uh, guys, you're hearing Dr. Jeff Kalashevsky joining us, author of Dark Sides. A random kidnapping is rare. And when you say someone that knew him, we mean that in the loose sense of the word, someone that had right. been in a class with him, somebody that was a checkout person at the grocery store, somebody that had connected with him online, you know, maybe in a gaming right. room. Most of the games right. that people play, they're not playing by themselves. They're playing with somebody in cyberspace, a real person out there somewhere. It it's could true. be any of right. these people. I don't mean... Uh, their best friend or their roommate or their girlfriend that really know them. It's more that someone could know of them. You're absolutely Correct. right, Dr. Jeff. And the scary part of that is you don't know who they are. They may not even right. be using their real name. Randy Harris, did he play online? You mentioned games. I mean, my son loves them. Did Caleb? Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, that night, um, one of his best friends that, that lives in uh, uh, Colorado, and I wanted to correct you, he's got a job in Alaska, not Colorado. Oh, so thank you. That's, 
pretty exciting, you know, for him uh, coming up this summer. And uh, anyway, but he, yeah, he was on the phone for we because I immediately uh, got the phone records uh, from AT and T, you know, just like just like anybody else could do. And so I started looking at all the phone numbers and the texts and doing who do I see on here that doesn't make sense or I don't know, or I'd punch him into my phone because I, I do know a lot of his friends. Um, and this particular friend's actually in Colorado Springs going to school and they had been on the phone playing video games, but, but without headsets they he, they normally would just call each other. So he was on the phone with him for, uh, 71 minutes earlier that, that evening, like at 10 o'clock. Have you guys been able to amass ring cam, any kind of cam from neighbors? Uh, yes, we're. The, the police have done a great job of that as well, and we've been uh, assisting them. We're still doing that today, just going back and double checking, make sure that we haven't missed any uh, surveillance cameras or ring cameras. Um, those, sorry, um, those are critical. The the one o'clock image uh, that you've been did he come across a stalker? Maybe showing that was a ring camera from three or four houses or apartment complexes, not complexes, but little duplex things down the, down the road. So yes, we highly encourage if, if every, everybody get out and look at their cameras and take five minutes, that's all it takes. And, uh, uh, I also encourage cause we're finding cameras that only that delete everything in three days, so, you know, change your, change your settings <laughs> to 60 days. So for future, you know, uh, surveillance. So you got it. Guys, you are seeing shots of Caleb Harris missing. This kid is scrubbed in sunshine. I, there's just no other way to put it. And Mr. Harris, I just don't know how you are getting up and putting one foot in front of the other. How are you and Caleb's mom managing? You know, it's it's hard, um, but we're also a family of faith. And we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, uh, you know, that's where our, our strength comes from. I cry a lot, but my wife is my rock. My daughter is my rock. My in-laws, my family, the church, the people in New Braunfels, the people in Corpus, um, just an immense amount of strength. I mean, just to have somebody donate a helicopter yesterday and today to just go search and make sure that we're covering every inch of Corpus Christi we possibly can in the hopes of really not finding him. You know, that, you know, we, we, you know that's what we're doing. We're just making sure that you know, we're doing our part to aid in the investigation. And we have so many people that have offered boats, so many people offered food. We've got volunteer search people. We have friends that we've known, you know, for as long as our, as long as our whole entire lives that are just involved heavily in, in supporting us. And, you know, we just feel, we feel the love, we feel the love of, of, of Christ just uh, radiating and, you know, giving us the adrenaline really just to keep going. But my wife, she's my rock and she's just been super strong. And my daughter is uh, just, she's amazing. Her birthday was, you know, Thursday, seven. Yeah, that, uh, this is a uh, mystery. This is the, uh, at the end of the show here, and I'll leave a link for this if you want to take a look at it. Um, uh, I don't know. This is, this is a mystery. What happened to him? He, uh, um, so we don't know a, a, lo a lot of uh, the story about, you know, his condition. I didn't, you know, was he, had he been drinking? Do they drink? I don't know. You know, we didn't hear that. Um, but I don't know. Folks, let me know what you, what you think. Um, this is, like I said, this is a, uh, a mystery another mystery so all right well i have a uh, missing child here um um I, this is and i i apologize his name abedia hernandez and i know i'm messing up his uh, first name and i apologize for that age 13 uh went missing uh, February the 5th, 2024, so, and from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and he could be in Murfreesboro, but he could be, uh, in Smyrna, 
Smyrna or Murfreesboro. So, but if you know anything about this young man, please give the uh, call 615-893-1311 or 1-800-TBI-FIND-5. Well, folks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it an uh, evening. Um, this has definitely been a mystery uh, about this. This is, boy, I, I, I started seeing, uh, you know, little clips and stuff about this young man uh, becoming missing. And uh, uh, so I don't know. I hope we hear some, hope the family and we hear some good news on the situation you know but well folks um i tell you what if you do have any family me members uh if you will please give them a hug give your kids a hug and tell them you love them okay folks uh so i'm gonna go ahead and go and until next time folks this is uh george and then, uh you all have a good evening and we'll see you down the road. Bye-bye.